If you are on that proverbial budget, but you want the latest and greatest i5 13600K, can you get away with a cheap $25 air cooler, some budget 3600 MHz DDR4 memory, a B660 motherboard, and get good FPS with an RTX 4090? Well, in today's video, we are going to be answering that question for you. So let's get into the benchmarks. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon, BFTYC. Links in the description below. Now before we do this, we've just got to update our BIOS to support the 13th gen processors. And uh, I didn't realize this board has BIOS flashback. So before we get into gaming, memory overclocks, check. And now we're gonna check Cinebench. And this one's really interesting because we're going up to 96 degrees. So the Wavibo cooler, this $25 AliExpress special is barely handling the 13600K at 200 watts, but it's doing it. And it's going up to 5.1 gigahertz, all cores on a budget B660 and motherboard. So the motherboard and the cooler are already impressing. And the scores are basically the same as it was on the Z790, but we will get back to some undervolting a little bit later. Let's test out those gaming performance numbers because the gaming power consumption and heat won't be anywhere near as bad as Cinebench. So shout out to Tomb Raider here, we got 236 FPS and we're down from 280 on DDR5. I do remember that off my head. The 4K numbers are looking like they're really close because main reason here was the GPU was pretty much pegged at close to 100%. So 4K, this budget set out with the RTX 4090 is already looking pretty good, but let's keep rolling through those other four games. And now we're just finished with the 4K and 1080p numbers on Cyberpunk. And you guys probably wanna know, did the FPS get a cyber dunk? Or did it dunk on Cyberpunk? Here's where we got over 200 FPS down to 193 at 1080p. Then at 4K, we are looking at 75 average FPS and the point percent low went down to 45 in this benchmark. So we didn't really lose a whole lot of performance at both 1080p and 4K. So those initial gaming numbers show that you don't have to go out and spend money on a Z790 motherboard. You don't have to go out and get a 420 mil water cooler. You don't have to go get the most expensive DDR5 memory money can buy. And you can practically save in, in all up maybe over $500 just by going with a DDR4 32 gig value kit and a B660 and a $25 cooler. And that money is definitely not going to improve your performance if you spend that extra at 4K gaming. As we saw with the numbers here today, 1080p, sure, it made a bit of a difference, but for me personally, even if I was playing at 1080p, it's not like I could not play these games. With the worst case scenario, I think it was Horizon Zero Dawn. No, actually it was Far Cry 6. That's way more than playable. And in fact, I play games on a 4K OLED and so that's where the RTX 4090 and the results 
matter the most to me. And even if we go over our monitor's refresh rate, what I do personally is I go into the NVIDIA control panel and cap the frames because I don't wanna be paying extra power that I'm not going to be seeing. It's just gonna be a waste of power. So I cap the frames, I undervolt my GPU, and I'm saving power whilst I'm gaming with the best possible experience of 4K. Now, the 13600K is going to make sure, even on cheap DDR4 memory and a cheap cooler, that I'm still getting that really good experience from the 4090. Though another thing is too, the $25 cooler, gotta give it props. It In games, it's running cool, the noise, this is exactly how loud it sounds. I'll just be quiet for a second. So there it is compared to a pen, flicking the pen, and the things is just ridiculously quiet. So good cooler and good performance out of it. And you don't need to undervolt if you're gonna be gaming with the 13600K and this same kit, but Here's where I'm a little bit concerned about that 200 watts in productivity. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna spend a little bit of time with this thing, undervolt it, and see what we can get those power consumption and temperatures down to in productivity, but also we'll take a look at, say, Shadow of the Tomb Raider and see what the power consumption numbers can be brought down to and the results in that game when we undervolt. So let's get straight onto that. And now we're back with the finale of the 13600K on the B660M Steel Legend and the $25 Wavibo. Man, it sounds so good saying Wavibo because it's like a brand you've never heard of before and it's performing really well. We dropped down our power consumption down to around 166 watts from 200 watts and we got virtually the same Cinebench score. And this was going from 5.1 gigahertz to 4.9 gigahertz in the BIOS and we dropped it 100 millivolts. Now, beyond this, the B660 motherboard has a limit to how much you can undervolt within the BIOS, and that's the limit we reached. I do admittedly want to spend more time with undervolting, but the results I've got here are good to go. In other words, if you buy a 13600K and the Wavibo and a B660, the Steel Legend, you can use this combo for productivity as well and not have any drawbacks. And this is where we went into gaming as well. And here's where we saw a drop from 106 watts to 84 watts in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, going from 68 degrees to 59 degrees. And we also lost virtually no performance. So I had to rerun the benchmarks because we actually initially got higher FPS with the undervolt from 236 to 242. But then I reran the benchmarks again on Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we went up to 245. But basically we're not losing any performance by undervolting, but we are saving some temperatures, we are saving some power, and our system is going to run perfectly. But the combo that I showed you here today, the B660M Steel Legend motherboard, the $25 cooler, the budget 3600 megahertz CL18 memory, and the 13600K together, works absolutely fine. That is if you just wanna put it all together and do minimal effort. Go into the BIOS, change like the XMP setting, change uh, two other settings, and you're good to go. You've now got a system that is gonna be gaming, even with an RTX 4090, absolutely fine. So that was something I wanted to test personally because in the review that we did with the 13600K, I did use a Z790, I did use a water cooler, I did use DDR5 memory, and all that stuff is much more expensive and I feel like the average person would be more inclined to just couple it with some budget banger stuff. And that is the beauty of the 13600K. It's like the i5 is suddenly back in the spotlight as not only being a good value CPU, but I feel like being the best CPU out there at the moment out of all the CPUs in terms of the CPU to get. But when we compare that to the i9 13900K, I wasn't too impressed with that. I thought, okay, you've got all this extra FPS at 1080p, but who's gonna need that? And you got a much higher price tag than the i5. So this i5, I feel, is very versatile. It can do the high-end performance, but it can also couple in with budget parts and get some really good results. Plus, we also did the productivity benchmarks in the review, and this thing is screaming fast for productivity as well. So if you wanna get a CPU, 
that's going to do high-end 4K video editing, then the 13600K is a great option. Don't be deterred by the traditional i5 being a bit lackluster in productivity. This thing is going to do well in multitasking and workstation applications too. So that's the most impressive part about this CPU is it can pretty much do everything. And in terms of undervolting, I am going to try and tweak the undervolting more to give you guys an undervolting tutorial with Intel CPUs, 12th and 13th gen, to get to the bottom of it and find what I feel is the best sweet spot with these CPUs. And I'll do that when I have some more time. But in the meantime, if you guys enjoyed today's video, then be sure to hit that like button for us. And also let us know in the comment section below, are you digging the budget combo setup with the 13600K? Especially that $25 CPU cooler. I'll put the links in the description below for all the gear that we used in today's setup too. But with that aside, I love reading those thoughts and opinions as always. Just like this question of the day here, which comes from Christopher69123. And they asked, does this card fit in an A320M motherboard? So they're talking about the AliExpress RX 6600M $200 graphics card. I think it might've come down a little bit more in price since we did that video. Really good value for money uh, GPU. No drawbacks, at least from what I tested. And that will work in an A320, though you will be limited to PCIe Gen 3 though it shouldn't make a difference on PCI Gen 3. It's got eight lanes of PCI Gen 4, but even at PCI Gen 3, it'll be fine on an A320, it'll fit. There should be no problems whatsoever. So hopefully that answers that question. And if you guys stayed this far and you're enjoying that TechS content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll catch you in the next one really soon. Peace out for now, bye. Also this RTX 4090, it's not just the back fan that's starting to wobble, it's also the front fan now. Welcome back to Tech Wobble City.